Hey guys, today we are doing 6.1's notes, which is all about exploring exponential equations, so growth and decay functions. Uh, this section should be a review, a review for us. Um, we've covered all of this information in Algebra 1, so it should be a quick refresher for us just to remind us of what equations look like when they're exponential, how they grow, and how we graph them. So just as a quick refresher, I know we went through this last chapter with our, expo uh, with our exponent rules, but just to make sure that we are still good to go, if we we're trying to go through and simplify some of these, 3 to the 4th power, we know how to do that on a calculator. 3 times itself 4 times should give me 81. Remember that our negative exponents are going to flip it over. So 1 over 2 cubed, which would be 1 eighth. Anything to the 0 power is just 1. If we have a negative exponent on a fraction, uh, we know that that's going to flip it over, just like the 2 to the negative 3rd got flipped over. Here, my whole fraction gets flipped over, so 3 over 1 to the second power, which gives me 9. And then anything to the first power is just itself. So those are our basic rules. When we are going through and graphing, this is our function that we're going to be starting with here, y equals 2 to the x power. That is kind of our, our, our most basic, simple uh, equation for an exponential. Just to remind ourselves and kind of re-explore what those functions look like, we're going to just evaluate with a bunch of different points. So everywhere from negative 3 to positive 3. Um, I have this set up as an x work y table. So we're just plugging in our x value in for our exponent, because that's where our x value is for an exponential, is in the exponent. So that's 1 over 2 cubed, which would be 1 over 8. So my y value is an eighth. The ordered pair, if I was going to graph that, which we will do in a second, is negative 3 comma 1 eighth. So I'm not going to show my work for all of these because it's a simple equation anyway. It's just 2 to that power. 2 to the negative second power is 1 fourth. 2 to the negative first is 1 half. Anything to the 0 power is just 1. 2 to the first is 2. 2 squared is 4. 2 cubed is 8. So I've got all of these ordered pairs in order, one, uh, negative 1 comma 1 half, 0 comma 1, 1 comma 2, 2 comma 4, and 3 comma 8. So those are all ordered pairs, they're all points that I can graph on my, um, on my coordinate plane, and I would be able to see what that graph looks like, which we're going to go ahead and uh, do that a little bit later. Um, notice here, as your x values become more negative, the y values become closer and closer to zero in this case. They get closer and closer to zero for this particular value. Um, that value that they approach, in this case zero, and other ones would be different, but the number they keep getting really, really close to is called the asymptote. Remember our asymptote, we'll, we'll look at the definition in a second, but it's, it's a, a number that my graph gets up close to, but never actually hits. All right, so getting into our definitions here a little bit, like I said earlier, our exponential equation is an equation where x has to be in your exponent. So specifically what we're, what we're looking at here for our definition, it's an equation where the input x is an exponent on a positive number base b. Now, we say it's a positive number. doesn't mean necessarily we're not dealing with negatives, but the base itself has to just be a positive number. And actually, in this case, we also know your base can't be positive 1, otherwise we don't have any kind of change going on. It's not going to grow exponentially if that base is 1. Um, but other than that, those are our requirements for having an exponential. Our asymptote, like I talked about just a little bit ago, that is that number or imaginary line that we'll look at on our graph, that my graph gets really, really close to. It approaches it, but it never actually hits it. It's kind of that, that force field on my graph, and, and it'll be more apparent when we actually take a look at it. All right, so our general form for our exponential, general form for our equation, y equals a times b to the x power plus c. And we'll look at kind of each of those individual pieces and how it affects my graph. In general, my base, my b, is my multiplier. That's how I grow from one number to the next. My a value is the starting value. It's my front multiplier, my leading coefficient. And then c, that's my vertical shift um, that's going to tell us where my asymptote happens. But we'll get to that in a second and, and kind of revisit that. So if we were asked to graph y equals 3 to the x power minus 7, um, here I'm going to go ahead and do an x work y table. 
I'm not going to have a coordinate row, um, but here just to kind of get cover our bases, let's go everywhere from negative two to positive two, just to get a get a get a good shape of what graph is going to look like. So as I go through to evaluate this, three to the negative second minus seven. Well, three to the negative second would be one ninth minus seven gives me negative six and eight ninths, depending on if you're a mixed number or an improper fraction person. Three to the negative first minus seven would be one third minus seven, which is negative one and two thirds. And then we start getting into some nicer numbers with these next couple. Three to the zero minus seven is one minus seven, so negative six. 3 to the first minus 7 is 3 minus 7, so negative 4. And then 3 squared minus 7, which is 9 minus 7, gives me a positive 2. So if I go ahead and plot those, uh, I'm going to start with the nicer ones. 2 comma 2, 1 comma 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4, 0, negative 6. And then as we start getting further here, negative 1, negative 6 and 2 thirds, negative 2, negative 6 and 8 ninths. So you can see our graph keeps getting closer and closer to negative 7. So I'm going to actually put a little dotted line there. That is my asymptote in this case. That is the spot, the, the value that my graph approaches. It gets really, really close to but never actually hits. So then from here, I'm just going to connect it with a nice smooth curve, get close to the asymptote over there on that side. And that is what my graph should look like. That is my exponential curve. Okay, one more little example problem, and then we'll get into some kind of some more patterns and some shortcuts of abbreviating this process up a little bit. So our x work y table, negative 2 to 2. So now our equation here is 1 half to the x power plus 2. 1 half to the x power plus 2. So as we do these first couple, 1 half to the negative second plus 2. Well, when we do 1 half to the negative second, the negative is going to flip it over. So now it's 2 is my base to the positive 2 power. That actually gives me 4 plus 2 is 6. 1 half to the negative first plus 2 is 2 plus 2, so 4, because 1 half to the negative first flips it over. 1 half to the 0 plus 2 is 1 plus 2, so 3. 1 half to the first plus 2 is a half plus 2, so 2 and a half. And then a half squared plus 2 is a fourth plus 2, so 2 and a quarter, 2 and 1 fourth. So if we go ahead again and plot those, negative 2 comma 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 1, 4, 0, 3, 1, 2 and a half, 2, 2 and a quarter, so you can see 2 is that value that my graph is approaching. That's, my, that's where my asymptote is. So then I'm going to start down here. There we go. So that's what my graph should look like. Again, my graph has that verted that horizontal dotted line at positive 2. That's where my graph kept getting closer and closer to. Um, and it curved up on the left side now. So that would be the big difference between the two shapes of the examples up above. One curves up on the left side, one curves up on the right side, which is really what we're getting into here with these next little bits. Now, because we've done this before, I'm not going to make you go through and do these exploration problems with investigating our B values. We should remember or just be able to realize from that last part there that any time my base, so we'll say when your base is bigger than 1, it goes up 
on the right when my base was smaller than one it is up on the left so that my base of three was up on the right side my base of a half was up on the left side what that correlates to or what that tells us is that anytime your b value is bigger than one we call this exponential growth exponential growth because my numbers are growing as you move to the right um, and anytime my base is between zero and one um, which here I forgot to add that in there uh, we're not gonna have any negatives that's just why we had that zero in there that is what we call exponential decay because again here if we focus on the right side it gets closer to my asymptote my values are actually going down as you move to the right with an exponential decay problem which is why DK down they're getting smaller uh, the other thing that we saw um, what how does the value of your C affect the location of the graph be specific um, the C tells us where the asymptote happens All right, that horizontal dotted line is my asymptote that's like my force field my boundary um, that's wherever my C was right when we had 3 to the X power minus 7 we had our, our asymptote at negative 7 when we had y equals 1 half to the x power plus 2 positive 2 is where that C happened um, so that was where my asymptote was so here the equation of the asymptote asymptote is y equals C now the other thing that we can take advantage of here these last couple of problems here I've kind of abbreviated the process a little bit because we don't need five points we don't need six points to be able to graph accurately if you noticed we had three nice points on each of my two functions when we were, we were dealing with an exponential growth problem like example number one zero one and two gave us nice whole numbers when we we're dealing with our exponential decay problem our base of a half zero negative one and negative two gave us our nice answers and that's what we want to try and use that's what's written here in our in our function or in our steps here um, our, our abbreviated steps for graphing these you start with your asymptote that's the easiest thing to identify it's just whatever your C value is and then from there if it's an exponential growth problem if your base is bigger than one you'll use 0 1 and 2 to evaluate um, if it's decay you use 0 negative 1 negative 2 so for these problems we're asked to identify whether it's growth or decay write the equation the asymptote and then graph so for number one here, two to the x power plus three, this is a growth problem because my base is two, that's bigger than one. My asymptote has an equation of y equals three because that's what my c value is. So I'm gonna start by putting my asymptote up there at positive three, a nice horizontal dotted line at positive three. And then all I have to do is plug in some points. I need to do a little x work y table because it's growth I want to use 0 1 and 2 so 2 to the 0 power plus 3 2 to the first plus 3 2 squared plus 3 so 2 to the 0 power is 1 plus 3 is 4 2 to the first is 2 plus 3 is 5 2 squared is 4 plus 3 is 7 so 0 comma 4 1 comma 5 2 comma 7 And there we have it easy peasy for our last one here y equals one-third to the x power minus six so this one is a decay problem because my base is smaller than one my asymptote is y equals negative six because I see minus six so one two three four five six put my horizontal line there my dotted line for my x work y table we'll leave a little bit more space this time one two there we go so because it's decay we want to use our negatives that's going to make our numbers nicer so one third to the zero minus six one third to the negative first minus six and then one third to the negative second minus six we know that anything to the zero power is one one minus six is negative five my negative is going to flip my one-third over so now three minus six gives me negative three and then my negative two as my exponent is going to flip it over but also square it so that nine minus six is positive three 
So 0, negative 5, negative 1, negative 1, 2, 3, negative 2, 1, 2, 3. Close to the asymptote, nice smooth curve on the left. And that's it. Your homework is right up there on the board, page 300, 4 through 18, just the evens. As always, if you guys have any questions, concerns, thoughts, ideas, hopes, or dreams, make sure you guys are reaching out and letting me know. Otherwise, have a fantastic day. We'll see you guys soon.